Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, to Friendly. Welcome everybody back. I see Copenhagen has uh, quite a lot of sun, so the one has, as the other decided that you already know all the innovation happened uh, in the postal industry in the last decade. I can tell you, you will be a little bit surprised, uh, and my challenge will be only to get a very short time frame, a complex uh, presentation, because uh, we have done quite a lot of analysis, and analysis means a lot of data. So I tried to reduce it as much as possible without losing the core of the message, but not boring you with too many statistics, uh, what we have looked into in the analysis we have done. The presentation overall has three parts, to keep it simple and stupid. So we we'll, uh, talk a little bit about um, the initial position where we come from in the study, and then uh, we'll, I will talk about the analysis of the awards and then the specific study we have done on the top. Hopefully, in this process, I can reach a little bit what this nice gentleman is demonstrating. That you have some really eye-catching ideas and wake-ups and maybe some takeaways. What have we done in the analysis? We looked at 10 years of award shortlisting in innovation. So we got 233 applications we looked in, in depth. So there's a year with Star Angels, they have supported us to have this uh, overview. Parallel, we started the first global innovation study, doing interviews with 45 um, uh, people and with 28 countries participating. And we got really tremendous support and feedback there because it looks like that the innovation issue is something where the industry right now is, is pretty interested. And uh, we have done an, an analysis which I will have not with me today. We have analyzed the diversification strategy of postal operators over all 28 in the last 10 years. And what you all can see is, is dramatically how much posts are moving out of their core business into other business, and how much percentage already the non course classical stuff like parcel and also letters is in their overall focus. Out of our questionnaire, we could then find two different types of companies. So I've, I've phrased them as market designer, so that was post operators themselves themselves quite innovative, which are participating on awards and winning awards. And more, and I will describe it, why the just do something companies. It sounds a little bit negative, but it's less negative maybe than you can imagine, because there's still the spirit there to do something very concrete. And I will give you there some concrete also examples how they act and organize um, uh, this overall. I think this is a, anyway a well important point organization. Let's go to the analysis of the awards. Why we can do this? Because this was a hard discussion, it makes really a lot of sense. I think it makes a lot of sense. Why? The more and more, and more are very well known and are setting some kind of industry trend. So the real triangle has done here a terrific job that people are focusing, fighting, and got a positive spirit. And out of our question, <laughs> we find out 80% of the people know it, use it, and say that is the award where we are going for. And all the others, this was tiny, tiny stuff majorly only localized. So that means if you have some kind of lighthouse stuff where people are competing to each other and wanting or want to win the award, it's this is the award. So this is some kind of the tip of the iceberg. If you're looking there deeper, I think we have a very good trend analysis about what's happening here because this is the nucleus bringing everything together. Therefore, we can't take it in every quarter numbers, but I think as a trend, this is a perfect starting point for where we come from and where is this industry going to. Looking on the participations, uh, you see some kind of EMEA dominance. America's is going down, which for me is uh, not really a surprise, looking at what has happened uh, in the American market and uh, looking at the very, very atomistic market in South America, Latin America. So we are talking about a lot of smaller companies, a lot of companies which are also focusing more on their region. So that's the sum of the hurdles. But Asia, good news, was a little bit popping up now, a little bit getting weaker. Hopefully, this is a motivation speed to say, come on, Asia, you are doing so much good things. Participate even more in this kind of awards and share it with others. The next point was then looking into, okay, where are the areas of um, we will see or have seen changes? 27% of the awards was in the area of a product, a new product intervention. And we were looking a little bit deeper, which kind of products are developed in these areas. You can see it was heavily around direct mail, hybrid mail, and then electronic mail, much less letter products. 
This is quite interesting. And uh, the second information on the chart I can give you is there is not a huge change concerning hybrid mail over the time. Ten years ago, hybrid mail was the issue for two to three years. And it's coming back now again. The difference is more parallel. We are talking now more about electronic platforms. And we are talking now more about cross-border hybrid mail. That is changing. And we're talking about new technology, which is used to base for the hybrid mail stuff. But I feel really interested is also the direct mail. So the direct mail, and <coughs> even down to unaddressed stuff, is something where people get very smart, clever solution, bringing together, like Danish Post, electronic comp components, address knowledge, and the, the need of the customer for more segmentation. What makes me a little bit nervous is that only 40% is around the core old traditional product, which is quite unusual for industries. Because normally the industry is doing this as a blockbuster something, so they've also tried to, to change the world. But one of our findings was that you're a little bit like the pharmaceuticals. They have also the big blockbusters and have a really huge problem to find the next wave. And uh, we, I have another slide where we also compared a little bit about spendings and with other industries and how it's happening. Let's focus where is the other money and the other application going to. 60% of the application was around the value chain areas. The traditional value chain from coming from printing, packaging, addressing, collecting, and you can see sorting and transportation. The core of, of a post, I would say, uh, out of the traditional understanding, is really the number one. Again, if you make a deep dive about what has happened in the last 10 years, there's a very, very clear tendency. Since 2007, transportation is more or less out. Why? My point of view is done. The job is done. You have done a tremendous good job there. To getting there, new innovation is pretty tough. This will be much more before or after. Sorting is the same tendency. The last year is going clearly down. Interesting enough is delivery was constant over 10 years. So the number of award participation was over the years, every time more or less the same. Understandable, because over 50% of your costs are spending there. And it makes a lot of sense to invent every time something new, because you get directly payoffs. The big surprise, and that was against my hypothesis when I was talking with the team, what I was expecting, I was thinking we are much more moving to the front end. The war has to be started not in the distribution arena, it has to be started in address, focusing, whatever. And no, no changes. Still not, not a lot of stuff, but it's more or less constantly doing the same. That's something I would think about. Is this logical? I would say uh, uh, maybe not. And it's interesting that more people are jumping into a complete electronic solution than starting to think what is the front end and how we can connect uh, there more. That was at least a, a hypothesis we used also then for the question. Yeah. Innovation arenas. Uh, I think this is also quite important to understand, and I started already with this definition of products. The others are processes, so the optimization of processes is uh, 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 something. Service arena, so how to get easier access but without a new uh, you know, uh, revenue stream. And the last and quite new one, and what business school in Ayesa uh, in Barcelona is working on it, two professors, um, is the business model innovation. Business model innovation needs really uh, have an abstract method how to design something new. And I have a concrete example out of the industry where somebody has done it extremely successful and extre extremely smart. It's really business model innovation is the best. So we looked at it, what is, what is the distribution again on the awards? And we found out, and this was pretty, not so, so much surprising that in the maintained business, so that means process optimization and services just make it better, is the majority of what you're doing. And increased business is only 20-25%. And also you can see the industrialization wave. The wave of industrialization was between 2003 to 2007. Focus, process down, process optimization, cost cut. From there we see more the service void, that means easy to use, get easier access right now in this industry. The next wave is our forecast is on business model innovation and more products. That has to come now. The difference is, and therefore we have, was basing our direct estimation out of this was, okay, then how to organize innovation will be crucial. How to manage organization will be crucial. And has this industry enough ideas? 
Coming from one of the good examples out of the first decade, I come here with one of the most impressive for me because it's so, so, so simple and stupid. You remember 2002? This was an award for the letter scale out of paper. A very simple solution, but very healthy and very useful for getting access, getting easier to use. Even you can put on your logo, oh, I am, I am in the awareness of the customer every day because it's somewhere on the desk and used. And even I could put a message on it, how to use it. Low tech meets your industry, and I think this is a perfect example of how people can do something very simple but very effective. I was so arrogant and I started a test about what's happening. And before I, I, I give you the, the answer of the test, I have a question. Which post operator is using EasyWeight? Or something like EasyWeight in this form? Is this room? Nobody? I don't believe this. At least Deutsche Post, I know. La Post, I think I know also, so quite a lot of them. Who has used it twice? <coughs> Good point. So far, I know there's one operator. And three times, nobody. I make the check, we make some phone calls, and I was talking with my reception in my office to say, hey, where is the scale? I would give you six months ago a, a scale. Where is it gone? <laughs> so we found out roughly after three to four, four months, there is a tendency that these scales are moving away. <laughs> they are gone. There's some phase of two weeks of complainment of the person, and then the whole process is back again. Ah, put a stamp on, will be right or not. My industry, this is a really huge opportunity of getting in contact with your customer. If you know this habit, you can send out every four months a scale, which is not too expensive. This is a new message. We introduce parallel this new product. And you are in front of your customer. <coughs> that means every disadvantage in the process where it's broke could be used to, to send out messages to, 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 uh, to do something. And this is very concrete and very cheap. Another example is this also, uh, and I'm sorry about uh, Kaber. I have used your Kaber as an example, but I would phrase it more in general. There are also other operators doing the uh, uh, package station or parcel station solution. And I'm phrasing the really solution because it's really a milestone what has happened here. A milestone what has happened here, and only a few people understand in the process that this is a platform which is dramatic good. Why? It's an easy access for everybody 24 7. It's not only for delivery, it's also for dropping something. It's a mixture between electronic and physical. We can build complete solution for after sales services around it. So a lot of options which is happening there. It could be a retail sales point. But if I look about where they are, not too many are around. We have no European network. Nothing not uh, happening uh, uh, around it. And one more. How many of you have an iPhone? 10, 20. At least a mobile, which is a smartphone. I would say much more. An iPad, I saw a minimum four. <laughs> also very fast. For this conference, four iPads is very cool. What's the change in there? If you look at all postal applications, and I've downloaded 10 of them, so is there are 10, 10 applications right now available for the postal market for iPhone and iPad. Where I get services, for instance, where I can find something, where is the right zip, zip code, where is this parcel stuff? This is a must do, because knowing this is not enough. Knowing where it is, when I am going around, is much better. So that means we are not using the asset what we have. We are building platform, we are making the next step. But again, the service component, how to reach it easily, is not yet there. But we are very close. And Virtual Post is doing a lot of it. We have uh, heard yesterday in post doing a lot of it. I think that the mental change is there. So I'm not negative about it. I see it's there, but you have as an industry to cry it out loud. Where is the journalist team talking with you about what's next on your innovation side? Why are newspapers not writing about it? Because we are not celebrating it. So more PR machine and it will help. Summarizing the first part of the study, overall we have done a quite secure forecast. In the last 10 years, over globally, there was 3,000 innovation in the post industry. And this was for me a surprise that if you talk about professional, everybody knows it. But if you talk about normal people, customers, nobody will yet feel it, see it. Only once at a time is something when a new sorting center was coming, some new international handy port or whatever, there was a smart, yes, there is something. 
But overall, this industry is much stronger than people believe. We have, of course, out of the past, the dominance of process innovation. <laughs> this will change. And I think you have done your homework. You have done the good stuff. Start now going to the customer front end. Change what you're doing on the customer side. And also focus on new business models. What says the second part? That people who study where we work with the people. First, the data, which is quite interesting. On the right side is the self-perception of the postal companies. 52% says we are equal innovative like other industries. That's the good results. And I think you're right. But we ask people which are more or less a little bit in contact with this, because I was sending the letter to the CEOs, and they friendly enough passed it to the people of strategy, which are more taking care of innovation. So that means they are much more aware about what's happening than everybody else. This is fair enough, because they can make a fair judgment. Good news. A lot of proud people there, some less. But if I look at the numbers that we have captured here from ZDW, only 0.6% of the revenue spent for R&D. And you see the list here. But it's not completely fair, because if I only look at the uh, postal and career service industry, we are missing the Siemens of the world, so the tier ones and the of the world, which are also investing into this industry for new solutions, but not only building into this industry. So the number is, of, unfortunately, of course, higher. On the other hand, I heard a lot of the last two days we are transforming, we have to transform our industry, we have to transform our business model. Without money, that is very complex because then you have only brave hearts doing a lot for nothing or with no money and no resource. So that's something where we easily maybe can also drive further on if you're spending a little more uh, uh, money. The question was for us how they are doing it. First of all, we ask them, how is it organized? 35% say on the uh, model, which say we, we are innovative. There's a high correlation is we have an 80% chance that we have a dedicated budget and we have a dedicated team for innovation. And the other way, people say, say no, we are not so innovative. There's only 30% in this case a budget and only 50% have a team. So that makes innovation processes fuzzy. And there's a correlation. So winners of awards, whatever, are of course more on the right side. The others are a little bit more on the follower side. This is even more interesting. Then we asked about what are the measurements for post innovation, where you are going through. And I will focus first on the white stuff, so the white bars, please. This is the companies not considering for war, so they are not the innovative one. They say, number is for 53%, we are going for turnover, we are going for new customers, we are going for profit. Straightforward. Straightforward. Nothing bad about it. <coughs> this guy knows we are going for the hard stuff. Not innovative, but business-wise, clear sense. Now we look at the innovative companies. What's the answer? We are going for turnover. Uh -huh, same. We are going for brand recognition. We are going for customer satisfaction. And then you see it goes hardly down. And one of the last is we are going for profit. Surprise. Really big surprise for us that uh, these guys are not going into this area. There was a question mark, why? If you look also on the measurements here, on, and this is quite interesting, there are companies out like 3M and others in the industry where how many products are less than three years old? How many products are less than five years old? How many products are less than seven years old? And that means if you look at the revenue share after launching a product, they are far on the 80% mark not older than five to seven years. Here we got this, innovations are above 3%, by 50% of the companies, and 50% says our innovation revenue share is less than 3%. So I think a little bit modernization of the product portfolio could be in something which helps. But still looking at what has happened there, why we have this non-profit orientation. What we found is we have asked about the structure of the team. The structure of the team from creating, creating innovation to, to, to design, and then for the launch phase. On the left side, you see the components. So it's an innovation department, we have IT, we have a little bit of marketing, and strategy and legal. If you switch them to the other side, then this is marketing, sales, surprise, production, IT, and the innovation <coughs> department. So if you have looked a little closer, we have some kind of a lack in the handover. So that means we are outsourcing the innovation stuff for the innovative company, 
and therefore they are winning the awards because up to the pilot stage, whatever, this team is in charge. And then it's changed. Then a new team is coming and starts commercializing the launch. Which has some logic on one hand, because therefore you can be quite innovative every time some new babies are coming. But imagine we would do it in our private lives the same way. I think a child needs parents keeping it up at minimum going to school. <laughs> that helps. So that means for our recommendation would be there, why you're not doing an end-to-end -end innovation team, which is component and do the launch, and after two years, and the product starts running and really taking off, then the normal departments can take over. A lot of companies doing this though, in this way, and a lot of companies are involving heavily the whole organization in this end-to-end -end teams. The next one is around time to market. And this is also quite interesting, I would say, is what's not unexpected. For product innovations, the 6 to 50 actually are not too bad in average, but we are more to the 50 months and not to 6 months. In other industries, if you look now on your uh, mobile devices, digital camera, whatever, they are really down every time new products, very fast, rapidly changing. But in, in average, if it's really true, that's not bad. Sometimes I have some doubts because I know some larger projects. Only the legal and IT issues can, can, can take months and months. So I, I think this is quite optimistic view about the reality. The only thing which was shocking for us was the business model innovation. If you read all papers of business model innovation, it's about to do something different, cheaper and faster. It's not faster, it's slower. But that's happened here. That's also the next big question mark for us, and uh, we was also deep diving to find the an answer. And the second which was also interesting, after two years, only 70% of the launched uh, products are stopped, which is an extremely good number. But I have the same stomach feeling. There's a tendency maybe in the industry to stop later. So that means your trial, trial ambition is, is longer maybe than uh, the others. We got not complete the data, but we had one practical test. When we was reaching out to people which are award winners to talk with them, only 20% of the people are still with the company. Everybody else is gone. It's for me also some kind of indicator uh, that this culture of being innovative was uh, overall not yet established, but it's coming now. This was hard fighting, and the hard fighters give up after some years of doing it. And this is very costly for the industry. So do everything to motivate them and make them to heroes. Don't let them go. Otherwise, you're starting all over again with a new, very expensive experience. And now a concrete example which I really like, and that is um, uh, around Posta Italiana, uh, mobile, mobile services, and this mobile payments. And this is really a good example for business model innovation. <coughs> the, the vision of them is still simple, simple to use, everything on a SIM card. They have focused, and what they have done is they have a pattern also in this area. So that was core. This was core to get a patent there and to be unique in, in the knowledge of this, what we are doing there. And then the big question was, where is the market we should focus and how to design the production laws? The market of this were very strict, very strict definition of the market. The market is first down their employees and the relatives around the employees. The second focus market was every bank, bank customer. The third was then the postal saving accounts. And the last focus was, and also for the rollouts, and people coming to the post office. And there was a clear no-no for everybody who is not part of the value chain down there, of the target group. It's a price. <coughs> but why? I can show you, show you how they have designed the complete uh, process, and I can tell you why they are so successful. They have come with a complete business model from we need a telco operator network to do it. We need IT resources, we need marketing, we need sales, and we need some kind of distribution. So post, uh, distribution sales. And we have four parties. One is Posta Mobile themselves, one is Posta Italiana, one is partner, and a network operator. The decision could be to do everything themselves. That would be a classical postal make answer. Nobody is as good as we are, nobody is as secure as we are, nobody is so trusty as we are. 
So you, then you start to do everything yourself. Good news is so far free from your normal, normal business that this time, this was, people were thinking, and saying, no, no, network operator, why? We can buy capacity. So outsourced. IT resources, limited. We only need IT architecture and designer, very limited. Everything else we will buy from our post Italiana team, which course they are really good in IT, they are really innovative. So let's go for us and a partner outside. So one strategic partner plus their own post Italiana resources, and only the heads come in Posta Mobile. Marketing, that's key, like the pattern of the sim. We have to do the complete marketing strategy. Sales, was more to this to design, outsourced. The operation of SIM card payment and so on, sales to Posta Italiana. And customer care is the same, partner and Posta Italiana. So that means overall the team is very slow. If I remember right, it's roughly 100 people. Designing in less than one year, a complete new company, launching it in one year, and having 1.3 million customers after a year. Heading this year for over 2 million customers overall. That is really dramatic, what they have done. And why? Because it was a collaborative approach. And that's the difference. If you remember my numbers, the average numbers there, this last project could be delivered so fast because you have partnered. If you would have built up everything on your own, not possible. <laughs> Jumping on the issue very fast, only to give you a second smell, because uh, out of the interviews we got the hint, OK, mobile market will be an issue. Therefore, this fits quite good, so Posta Italiana has this nice case, but also, in general, you should also not look only, only on social media uh, discussion we had from yesterday. Be aware about these numbers and what's happening in this industry. First, we have 3.5 billion mobile devices out now. We have only 1.2 billion network computers out. We have this last year 180 million smartphones out. And we know already that only the iPad potentially should go for 10 million. And we know also the info 4 will go for 600,000 after one day of sales. So this is the trend you can't stop. First time iPod is not selling so fast because smart phones and all this stuff is compensating this. This device will be everywhere. Plus, it's first really maybe the first time a non-American <coughs> evolution. What means this? A non-American revolution. So a revolution, we could say, okay, when Apple and everything this is talking about mm -hmm. coming. No. It's a change how if you, if you feel it, you have to go to Asia. China Mobile is now the biggest operator worldwide. In India, people are selling like hell cell phones. This will be the communication instrument. In Taiwan, it is selling like hell. And then more important, what is the difference? The difference is you see here, like left hand corner up, Canada, Vancouver, MRT system. Hong Kong, MRT system. Singapore, MRT system. And right corner is somewhere in London or Paris or Germany. What's the difference? The difference is, in all the Asian, you will have full access, full time. It doesn't matter if you're a tube, you can do something with your application, you are online. Only a few cities in Europe or America, you can do it. Here's some other pictures. Indonesia, South Africa, put it in Asia. You are online every time five star access. Try it in New York, try it in San Francisco. They are complete streets. You have nearly no access. And even worse, since AT&T <coughs> has sold exclusively iPhone, they are stopping selling iPhones in, in New York because iPhone is using so much UMTS capacity that the network is not strong enough and they have complete drop out of the networks. That is a brutal change. A brutal change we have never seen before. It will be online every time, every minute, in every quality in Asia. And they will not accept five seconds. That does not work. Here a picture in India. What's about this beauty? As a professor has done an analysis about traditional behaviors and what's happening here. This is from South Africa, this lady. And in average, the South African beauty is touching her, her hair 31 times a day. Right now, she's touching her cell phone 68 times a day. <laughs> it's changing, also in those areas, but not in Europe. Summarizing. 
the last 10 years, we have this focus on the process innovation. We have, uh, it has changed, this is good news, to products and customer orientation the last three years. The budgets are still a little bit low, so we can spend a little bit more officially. We have seen over 300,000 innovations in the last 10 years, but uh, we have not read too much about them outside the core, core postal society. Award winners are doing 80% right. But the focus should be on awareness and how to get this handover problem and the commercialization problem solved. We have some kind of missing portfolio management. The question is there only a few where somebody decided how much and which type of innovation we are spending, who is organizing it, who is authorizing it, who is signing it. And the end-to-end -end culture can, can, can be enhanced. The main culture potentially is slowing down dramatically. And so the new core co competence could be much more how to collaborate, how to manage service instead of how to develop every service on its own. And don't forget the mobile revolution. Social media, you don't have to know, it's for me also a no-brainer. It was interesting, it was not popping up in our interviews, this issue, but mobile was popping up. And that will change the behavior, how we think about communication and how we want to communicate. So first, there's a huge chance for you for an expense or something, because telco operators have tested also for 10 years. Have you seen too much of them? No. That means innovation transformation, Postal 3.0. That's the issue of the future. We are more than happy to share with you more ideas. This was a fast track here. Just contact me or my team. I'm more than happy and uh, I'm open for discussion afterwards. Thank you very much.